opposition leaders and former cabinet ministers are now among those calling for a halt after three British aid workers were killed in an Israeli airstrike. John Chapman, James Henderson, and James Kirby were among seven aid workers for World Central Kitchen who were killed on Monday. They've been hailed as heroes by their families. The government has now come under serious pressure to stop providing arms to Israel, who called the strike a grave mistake. Shadow Foreign Secretary David Lammy has called for a suspension if Israel is found to have broken international law. Scottish First Minister Hamza Yusuf described the supply of arms as shameful and unacceptable and warned the Prime Minister that the UK is in danger of being complicit in the killing of innocent civilians. Lib Dem leader Sir Ed Davey and former Foreign Secretary Jack Straw have now also called for a halt. Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, has said he would investigate the strike to the end. Now, I just wanted to show you the Independence front page. Um, and looking at that and social media, and I've lost my mic, but I'm so hoping you can still hear me. Um, this is pretty much um, the overwhelming feeling of a lot of people. It, May seem wrong that after more than 30,000 Palestinians in Gaza, according to the Hamas Health Ministry, have perished, it took the deaths of seven international aid workers to stir Western governments into a sense of outrage. Um, the moment has come, it says at the end, to do whatever it takes to stop or to force Israel to end its war. It has to uh, stop. Now, that's the opening of, as it like, the front page of The Independent. There are arguments on both sides, and the reality is this exercise is, to say the very least, strong passions uh, uh, across the board. Now, I'm going to do the unusual thing and first go to Peterborough and listen to what Dorothy has to say. Dorothy, do you think um, it's time to stop uh, supplying arms to the Israelis? No, no, it isn't. Um, it, it's war. Israel needs help. The Jewish people have been persecuted for hundreds of years and Israel has had enough. Hamas, Hamas will carry on. Even if they have a ceasefire, Hamas will be getting together. They won't stop till Israel is off the earth. Mm -hmm. It's terrible about the aid workers. It's absolutely awful. But unfortunately, in war, people die. Mm -hmm. And in the First and Second World War, people died, innocent people. But at least Israel told the Palestinians to get out of Palestine and uh, to Gaza, um, which, which the people in the World Wars didn't do that. They just, they just killed them mm. and, and 10 million Jews in the concentration camp. Dorothy, um, thank you for uh, what you, you, you say. I know you, you, that's part of the case. Uh, there's also, um, the other reality, which is, of course, that um, during the incursion and the invasion in Libya, uh, there was, uh, to say the least, uh, a number of civilian casualties that uh, David Cameron, who was foreign secretary at the time, caused. Uh, Joe Biden, who was vice president during the de facto occupation of um, Afghanistan. People were killed at weddings, a number of civilian casualties. And between 2015 and today, the British government have supplied Saudi Arabia with, I think it's $8.2 billion worth, pounds worth uh, of arms. So there's a sense in which we have a situation here where there are still over 100 hostages. Uh, the argument of the British, excuse me, the argument of the Israeli government is they're trying to get rid of Hamas, which is believe. an existential threat. I cannot believe I'm putting, here. putting uh, that point. No. I'm putting, it's important to put no. that point, and, and that's the argument. And so why would you stop supplying arms? It's a double standard applied, people would say, just to the Jewish state. No, I'm sorry. This is finished. This argument, in Dorothy's view, is now so not uh, accepted by the world, never mind anybody else. You're right. There have always been wars. People have died. And every time it's happened, we, we, we said it was wrong. We said it was wrong when we went to Iraq. We said it was wrong when we went to Libya and destabilized a perfectly working state. That does not excuse what, what Ralph Nader, who's an American mm -hmm. um, uh, environmentalist, yep. uh, lawyer. Presidential candidate, yep. yeah. His estimate, which he issued two weeks ago, is around 200,000, the mm. Palestinian deaths and disappeared. Now, I want to say this yes. really important. 
I don't blame Israel for all of this. I blame the West. They created the situation where Israel thinks and thought for a long time. It didn't have to obey international law. It didn't have to obey or do anything about UN resolutions. It's, in, it's nuclear arms are still uninspected. You create this monster. We are more guilty than it is mm -hmm. of the situation. Mike, I, I'm going to come to, to you. Um, it, it, Yasmin describes it as a, as a monster, describes UN resolutions. Uh, a lot of people who support the state of Israel would say that uh, the UN is disproportionately focused yeah. on the state of Israel when there are other horrors in the world where more people div, uh, die and actual, well, and, and genocide taking place, Uyghur Muslims, etc., the Rohingya people, where nobody's interested at all. But the focus on Israel says something perhaps a little bit uh, disturbing about um, people's um, rather disproportionate interest in the single Jewish state. Oh, I think that's always been the case. Can we just work out first that the amount of arms we supply to Israel are 0.02% of the arms that Israel acquires each year? 50% come from uh, America, another 30% from Germany. So, to be perfectly honest, if we suddenly issued, mm. right, we're going to stop sending arms to Israel, we'd look like a tiny power in the world trying to flex its muscles, and it is ridiculous because it wouldn't make any difference. Now, Israel, and I, I, people need to understand this all the time, every day of the year, every day in their existence, mm -hmm. they are defending all their borders. They have got people who want to incur in the north, the south, and the east and the west, and therefore they deserve to be able to defend themselves. They can only defend themselves yep. if they acquire weapons. I hear what you say. I'm, I'm going to go to Terry and Kate. I'm going to put the other side of the argument. I mean, the reality is these aid workers have died. It's a tragedy it's that it's taken, and that's the takeaway. But, but, from, Anna, the take why are we, we're talking about I was it about because to, three white people have died. Well, I was about to yeah. say, uh, th this is, listen, you can shout. Uh, no, maybe I, alongside you. And it's right to be passionate about it that um, women and children um, uh, have They're died. It is a tragedy. All the time. It is a tragedy without any question, but that it's the first time that this is finally galvanized politicians when um, it's aid workers um, without, o on any view, courageously trying to uh, deliver food into that benighted. Horrifying 198 part of the world. Uh, aid workers were killed before this. Uh, and journalists as well, too, which is another point which no doubt we'll make in due course. Uh, Terry from Kent, what's your view? My view is we've already got blood on our hands regarding this situation. Mm -hmm. We should never back, we should not be back in Israel. We should not be, not be sending arms out there. Israel turned around and said a few months ago they wanted a one nation state. On the TV last week, there was a, one of the ministers on there stated the map of, it, of the Gaza Strip, all laid out with Israel people there. They don't want aid going in. That's the reason why they bombed them blokes. There's definitely no reason for bombing. You know, and they bombed up three vehicles. They must have realised that they were aid workers and not terrorists. And they don't want no one going in there stopping them. And they, start, they want the one nation state. And the only way they're going to do it is, I tell you that, in two weeks' time, they're going to go in that last place left and they're going to bomb it to the ground. Terry, what do you make of uh, what Israel says that it does all it, it can to it, it does all it can to avoid this? And uh, the president, Isaac Herzog, um, called the world central kitchen founder, Jose Andres, expressing deep sorrow and sincere apologies and uh, saying he's committed to carrying out a thorough investigation of the incident. I mean, to say the very least, Bearing in mind what's happened, it seems odd that they would be a strategic target, right? The thing is, go on, Terry, sorry. Sorry, the thing is, they go in there, yeah, they bomb a building, and they say, oh, we had to bomb that building because there was a terrorist in there. But the thing is, there could be like 10, 15, 20 families in that building. Mm. So now you, you're talking about the figures, how many are dead. What about the people that have been buried? You know, you look at the country in a whole, the amount of flat, flat buildings that have been flattened, how many, build, how many dead people are in them buildings? Their excuses, oh, there's terrorists there, there's terrorists there. And that is, if there's terrorists in there, why don't I just go in, the last bit, go in with troops only to stop that? You know, otherwise, if they don't and go in bombing, they're going to kill thousands more. Just well, going with the troops. In that way, you, you target what you're going to kill. Well, there are um, troops are, are, are on the ground, but uh, to say the least, one of the difficulties is, you know, this is a war that's taking place. Uh, you in you circumstances can't call it a war. It's, in you can't call it a war. Well, it, it's circumstances it's an where it's in an, ur thing. in an urban centre. So yeah. I do, it's do an finish. Unequal, it's an unequal uh, 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 conflict where 
the one side is so overarmed mm -hmm. and the other side has these, this terrorist group which has done great damage and I completely accept that Hamas started what has turned, and because Hamas never cared about the Palestinian people. But also remember this, and our listeners need to know this, Hamas was facilitated by Netanyahu way back when they, uh, Israel attacked Lebanon. They created Hamas. Yeah, they're, they're funded by Iran now. They are now, the world. We've but got to go before, to a break. Uh, uh, now, before we carry on with calls uh, this morning, former Home Secretary Suella Braverman was asked by Radio Force Today programme if Israel could now be in breach of international humanitarian law. And have a listen to what she said. Absolutely not. The suggestion itself is absurd and frankly an insult to Israel, who's been going above and beyond uh, the necessary requirements to ensure that civilian casualties are limited, to ensure that aid is received onto the Gaza Strip and distributed. Uh, I've seen evidence myself in terms of very up-to-date photographic evidence of plentiful food packages and trucks of uh, food, water and medicines getting to the the people of Gaza. Now, uh, before we go to, to Colin in Edinburgh, um, I saw your hands over your ears. I hate Jasmine. that woman <laughs> so much. I hate her. That's all. Well, that's uh, you might dislike her, but you should attack um, ideas. No, no, and no. Not I people. can't because I hate her. I can't well, give you uh, any that's, view. It's not a sort of a helpful. Uh, uh, no, political... I know, but well, I hate her. Uh, trying to <laughs> move beyond uh, your hate, which I think is actually a real pity because she makes a point. One of the issues that the Israeli government say and others um, is that um, it's very difficult to get uh, some of the aid into the people that need it most, mm. and there's some evidence. Again, uh, this is me presenting the side of the argument that a lot of the aid has uh, been taken by by Hamas fighters. That's why they needed the security. Israel's been to, lying. They, that's why they need the security in the first place. Israel's been lying over and over again. It lied about the UN refugee uh, organization. We now know it's been proved. It's lied about all of this. You know, it's very convenient for them that every time they're in trouble to name Hamas and there are people like Dorothy who will believe them. But I'm sorry, the global population Actually, this is one moment when I'm really pleased we do have social media mm -hmm. because we're able to see for ourselves mm -hmm. what Israel's doing. Well, but don't forget how few people are actually on social media um, and it disproportionately represents uh, a view which may not be commonly held across nations of the world. You see part of it. Colin, in like Ed Hammerstone. wait a second, Hello. let's hear from yeah. Colin. You're up in, in, in Scotland. Uh, uh, what's your view? I, I hope you heard what Suella Braverman had to say. Do you agree with her and Yasmin? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Hi, our panel. Good morning, panel. Yeah, yeah. Totally agree with her. Um, I totally agree with what she said there. I'm not a Conservative voter. I'm in Scotland, so obviously I'm an SNP voter. Um, but yeah, actually, I do agree with what I just heard on the phone there a minute ago. Um, I'm also ex forces, served in Gulf 1991. And we're America, with the Americans, we had blue on blue contacts there as well. Yeah. And. It's a part of the war theatre. When you're in a theatre of war, these things happen. And uh, I can understand why Jasmine is losing the heat about it because there's so many civilians being caught up in this, whether the figures are right or whether they're wrong. I also would like to say that the the three British guys, they weren't aid workers, they were ex-forces, they were SBS, special right. boat service soldiers. Right. What well, were they doing across to, there uh, working, for, working for a kitchen's Somewhere in somewhere along the line, it doesn't meet the match. But I do agree, Israel have put their hands up and said, we will look into it. What if Hamas said? Right. Uh, Tony, your response to what... Uh, Tony, sorry, you're in Cornwall. I just called you Tony. Um, uh, you, you've just heard uh, what's been said uh, up there uh, in Edinburgh. Yeah. What's, what's your, your reaction, Tony? Oh, oh well, um, uh, listen, I just feel... There's a lot of military speak uh, there, but but really what it boils down to, in my opinion, it's obviously they don't want the food convoys getting through. It's obvious they're targeting them. And it's a kill now and have an inquiry later sort of attitude. The the IDF are bringing shame on Israeli people um, by, by their, their actions in Gaza. You know, it's just a disgrace. And we're compliant. We should stop immediately any arms. And it's not going to affect the war very much. It's not going to affect anything, I wouldn't have thought. But the thing is, it will send a message, and at least we'll be making some sort of statement. Um, for a nation who suffered 
so much at the hands of military um, in their history to be to be targeting like Gaza, like they are, yeah. and an aid convoy. Let's face it. Come on, you know they targeted that convoy. Well, they, actually, trust and they, I, they, I, I, they say it was a mistake. I'm going to give you Mike before we go to yeah. very quickly yeah. a, a uh, response. Tell to me, that. I don't think they did target it. If you look at Israel, they mm -hmm. are, in my view, the most civilized country in the Middle East. Right. <laughs> They are civilised. <laughs> They're the only democracy in the Middle East. They don't ban people from having same-sex relationships and they have an open mind about societies living together. Right. I don't believe for a moment they targeted that comment. Well, thanks, Tony, for your calls. And I'll tell you what else is coming up on the show in a moment, but first, a few more on your calls on whether the UK should stop supplying arms to Israel. I'm going to go, first of all, uh, to Kathleen in Middlesex, uh, where I was uh, born and more or less side... Uh, uh, you're up first. What's your view on this? Hi. Um, I think absolutely yes, they should. England should stop supplying arms to um, England, uh, Israel. And I've heard something earlier on the panel in terms of percentages that it wouldn't make a difference anyway. And I argue, yes, it would. I think England, I was born in England, mm -hmm. England have given tacit approval to Israel's actions over a long time and it's frustrating for me to hear that this all started on October the 7th because it didn't actually. This is a long running problem that's been there for a long time and it's very difficult for me to see Israel as the occupying force having all the power. I don't think this is a war. It's a battering. It's like setting an XL bully mm -hmm. on a poodle. Now, I, I hear what you say. And suffering and is off the scale. I it. think we, we need to, instead of us discussing it, we need to stop bombing these people first, now, immediately. Well, I, I hear what you say, and that's a, a, a widely held thought. Ka uh, Kathleen, I'm going to come back to you. Um, one of the things that I think uh, people are concerned about is not just Israel. Um, you'll have heard me say that uh, between 2015 and 2022, 8.2 billion pounds worth, I think probably more up to today's date, was um, provided in arms to Saudi Arabia as they prosecute their war in Yemen, where thousands of civilians uh, have been killed as well. I presume uh, your well, correct sympathies would, would go out to those people and you'd say we should stop supplying arms to all of those uh, those who are prosecuting those sorts of wars as well. Absolutely. And and you're absolutely right. But I'm focusing on Israel because it's because this is this was the question that was asked. Mm -hmm. But I could go on and on. And I think, you know, I keep hearing um, and I know that because these people do it for a living, but I keep hearing things like, oh, you know, there are bound to be casualties and hearing Netanyahu and it's too casual. When I hear Rishi Sunak, Rishi Sunak saying, oh, you know, Israel have a right to defend themselves. I'm seething. Everyone has a but, right Catherine, to defend I'm, I'm themselves. Sorry, I'm going to get... I'm gonna go, I, I, Mike, let me bring you in on that, please. Yes. Catherine, they do have a right to defend themselves. They're a sovereign country. They're a de democratic country. Now, when you say, oh, you get upset when people say it started on October the 7th, it didn't. It started before that. Hundreds of years before that, maybe. But where did it start? Did it start at the Munich Olympics, for instance, you know? An unprovoked outrage. You can't just keep saying it didn't start on October the 7th because Gaza wouldn't be flattened now and this terrible conflict wouldn't be going on if they hadn't gone across the border on October the 7th and killed 1,200 innocent Jewish well, people. Yeah, Yasmin's it's chomping at the bit to, to get involved. And I, 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 it's important that you do, but let's, please, if we can... I just it's want to thank Kathleen. Right, you can thank yeah. Kathleen. You, you've thanked uh, Mary in Leicestershire, um, and then we'll come to you, uh, Yasmin. Um, uh, should we stop supplying arms or, or, or not? Uh, absolutely, we should stop providing arms. And let me tell Mike... Yes, Mike, it started when the slogan, a land for a people, for uh, a land without a people, for a people without a land. That's when it started, Mike. Yes, that. Britain should stop. Bre yes, Britain should stop arming any country in the world. Uh, Israel, uh, Saudi Arabia, w whatever it is. But as the lady pr prior to me said, we are talking about Israel this morning. And uh, British should stop arming uh, Israel. Immediately. Why no. did it take the killing of yes. seven, not three, mm -hmm. seven, seven aid workers? One of them was a Palestinian. But will you see his face on the papers this morning? No. 
you would see the faces of people from different parts of the world who had gone into the country to provide aid and had cleared, had cleared their aid working with the authorities. Well, well I, I hear what you say, and please forgive me for talking over you. Uh, we sad is a complicated uh, conversation. It's one that really needs mindfulness and thought. But I'm going to give you, Yasmin, the very well, last quick word. I think they've word. said it all, but I do also think um, that this idea that Israel's a democracy and therefore it can damn well do what it wants is no that. longer is no longer washing with the British public or the global populations. I didn't say that. Well, uh, yeah, I, I don't think you did, but I, I hear what you say and it seems that that's the overwhelming swell of public opinion which has changed. Um, and it's interesting in the circumstances that, that it has begun uh, uh, to shift. We, we watch this space moving forward. Thanks, Mary. Let's remind